the divine mudras on helavana katte giriyamma giriyamma became ecstatic when sri gopal dasa announced that the puja of that day will be performed on the rangoli drawn by her for that auspicious occasion giriyamma drew the figure of sri gopal krishna in rangoli art she drew also another flowery design at the place where the puja idols would be kept for worship during the puja gopal dasa was shifting his glance between the gopal krishna image in rangoli and its creator giriyamma and when giriyamma directed her look at the rangoli she felt like gopal krishna being alive there before her in appreciation of giriyamma's talent sri gopal dasa before his departure from the place presented to giriyamma a gopal krishna vigraha icon giriyamma from then onwards started worshipping that vigraha with great devotion performing abhisheka alankara with the offering of a variety of naivedyas in a grand style just as she would have fondled her child she imagined the icon to be her offspring and did everything for it in a make believe imagery as a mother would do for her infant she would keep the vigraha at the center and with other women dance around it with the beating of sticks known as kolatam in tamil which swelled the number of her admirers visiting her house the offerings made to her also grew bigger causing great joy to the family members but giriyamma would be disinterested in all those as if she was unconnected with them giriyamma started composing songs too after she had come in possession of the gopala krishna idol she was blessed as a divine grace with the prowess to compose kirtanas and the idol used to dance before her whenever she used to sing those compositions in solitude just as the santana gopala krishna idol had danced before sri raghavendra when he had composed and rendered the song indu enage govinda sri gopala krishna who was in an idol form danced before giriyamma when she sang her compositions generally dasas would use the expression vittala in their mudra style of identity for their compositions purandara dasa used purandara vittala sri sri padraja ranga vittala and sri gopala dasa gopala vittala as their respective mudras while certain others appended divine names also in the identity of their songs sri vyasaraja's mudra was krishna giriyamma in the tradition of the dasas started using the expression helavana katteya ranga as the tag of identity for the songs composed by her mudra as would thus be evident serves as a symbol of identifying the composer of a song since giriyamma had been born with the grace of lord sri ranganatha swami and had acquired the talent of composing songs through his divine blessings she appended the name of that deity only as her mudra later she became famed for that reason as helavanakatte giriyamma drawing a variety of stone powder designs every day keeping the krishna vigraha in the middle of those flowery designs dancing around it and singing songs in extolment of the deity became a daily routine in the life of giriyamma and it then continued uninterruptedly and giriyamma's husband too joined in this worship and was helping his wife in the manner he could in her deification the public of the place was nonplussed unable to know whether it called for admonition or sympathy they appraised this indirectly to tipparasu's family some were bold enough to rebuke openly that giriyamma was not living with her husband as a normal wife should she had said that she would get her husband married off to another bite is it not sheer empty talk commented many which even reached the ears of giriyamma who was therefore constrained to broach the sus- uh, subject to her husband though unwilling at first her husband relented later and so helavanakatte giriyamma herself had the marriage of her husband performed with another bride after the entry of one more person in the life of her husband to look after him giriyamma spent longer hours in the adoration of sri hari extolling his glories in her songs 
that flowed out of her heart with a spontaneity but her family members were not in the least supportive of her actions and were always wrathful with her they disputed whether it was not other make for a woman to be not tending to the needs of her husband keeping herself busy in only singing dancing and composing hymns besides being in conversation with visitors at other times the root cause for the anger of the family members on giriamma however lay in the fact that the offerings made to her by her admirers devotees became inaccessible to them after the entry of another person in the life of her husband their disappointment born out of such frustration outwardly manifesting itself in their indignation and fault finding but giriamma was seldom bothered about such taunts and always maintained her poise the residents of the village too blind to the realities were censorious of her actions the only reason for it being that she was a woman can a woman like the dasas sing and dance and proffer advice to others they went it out and when giriamma's relatives too lent their hand to such criticism it only fueled the fire of the ubiquitous contempt for her her actions were ridiculed raising the question whether a barren woman like her could perform puja and do the naivedya distributing it later to the devotees which was not sustainable by the conventions of religious orthodoxy it was under these circumstances that the antagonistic group had said something ill of giriamma to the shrimat staff even as sri sumatindra tirtha was entering the village but the occupant of the exalted seat that sri raghavendra had adorned would have certainly known things beforehand and that undoubtedly was the reason why at the time of giving tirtha his holiness had observed the hand of giriamma and pondered over it as being emblematic of divine attributes the following morning there was a crowd of devotees waiting for mudra dharana in the madhva tradition mudra dharana or the branding of the religious markings on one's person by the pontiff of the monastic order to which one belongs is a long established practice that is backed by the belief that it has the power to remove sins and ward off malefic influences of course this kind of ritual is prevalent in certain other sects too this branding is different from gopi chandana application and entails heating metallic rods contrived with shanka chakra markings at their ends and pressing them on the person of the devotee chakra on the right shoulder and shanka on the left one whereas for women the branding will be done on the inside of their forearms in a similar way such marks will remain as scars for some months before disappearing when giriamma had come for mudra dharana and had extended her arms before the swami the pontiff noticed such divine symbols thereon shanka on one arm and chakra on the other on the earlier occasion when she was receiving tirtha her hands had been covered by a portion of her sari and hence the markings were not visible then but later when she came for mudra dharana they could be seen clearly and sri sumatindra felt happy that what he had known through dhyana was indeed true amma you don't need any branding you already have the religious marks through the grace of sri hari those who are able to see it will understand this your hands have divine attributes in them they are like those of yashoda and devaki and therefore tomorrow's puja will be performed on the rangoli designs drawn by you observed the swami raising the applause of the gathering there the evil minded ones hung their heads in shame on hearing the swami's words and the instant hailing of this devotees there Giriamma accordingly had drawn columns all around the puja mandapa on the following day a little away as usual she drew a flowery design and kept the icon of sri gopala krishna there and started rendering the song rama sri ragunandana carrying everyone to a heavenly setting for they could all hear the noise of the anklets 
and sense in that divine ambience a redolence of the celestial world. And when Sri Sumatindra said, Giriyamma, Yashodhamma, I saw Krishna dancing before me. Her greatness could be understood even by those who had earlier derided her. After this happening, Giriyamma continued composing songs like the Haridasas. Her fame thus spread far and wide. At Kamarakati on the bank of the Tungabhadra river, she established a shrine for Sri Anjaneya under her personal supervision. And it is said that it was in the same Tungabhadra river that Giriyamma had been lost when it was in deluge. It's believed that just as Sri Purandaradasa had disappeared at Hampi in the Tungabhadra river, Giriyamma could have likewise become one with the river. Helavanagatte uh, Giriyamma's life story bears testimony to the fact that inundation in the Tungabhadra is an age-old phenomenon. The periods when the Tungabhadra was in flood and what happened as a result thereof could be known distinctly if a search of the historical records is carried out, a matter that has assumed greater significance now. We have recently known of the horrendous scenes of the Mantralaya flood of October 2009. What happened then needs to be recorded in this work with an in-depth analysis of why it took place. Many had questioned me about that incident and I had then said that there will be writing on it in part 8. To know the answer for it, we shall now examine the shocking happenings that took place at Mantralaya about two years ago.